you like to tell the viewers about the rally? Well, yeah, we're, we're having a rally today against inappropriate development in New South Wales and we, I've been fighting the Currawong fight for over a decade and then we realised that there were so many people all over New South Wales whose communities are being shafted, as you so elegantly put it, by the planning laws of New South Wales. So we broadened, the, broadened our horizons and we've called people from all over New South Wales and they're coming here today, hopefully, and uh, we'll have a good protest and send a very clear message to the Minister. Increasingly, contentious developments in New South Wales are being declared state significant. And are they being assessed under this Part 3A um, element in the Planning Act? And that puts total control in the hands of the Minister. I can understand why major infrastructure should be treated like this, but one has to ask, is the construction of hundreds of luxury uh, dwellings in the small coastal hamlet of Catherine Hill Bay, which places environmental and heritage at risk in the interests of state infrastructure. Oh! Thought you might say that. Let's look at the other one. What about the destruction of heritage uh, precincts and homes and villages in Karingai to make way for thousands of medium density developments? Is this state significant infrastructure? Oh! The, the outcome in Port Macquarie shows us is the, the community up there does not believe that the opposition shows a real alternative. What we want is a government that's going to be responsive to all of you. You are the people who actually care and live in these communities that are so affected by these appalling development decisions. Now, what I'd like to do is to start by acknowledging a speaker you're going to hear from in a few moments, and that is Jack Mundy. Yeah. Jack Mundy, who led the charge, and got along with the people from Kelly's Bush, who led and the people who were involved for the Labor government in 1978-79, introducing the environmental Planning and Assessment Act. And what we've seen for the last 25 years is a concerted determination to strip away those rights. Now, what I'd like to briefly is just tell you how that has come about. And it's that the developers, primarily through the Property Council of Australia and the Urban Development Task Force, have sort of developed sophisticated ways, well not so sophisticated, of working their way around the, the Planning Act, of undermining it, of stripping it of the essential provisions that ensured community access. And how it works, it's pretty simple how it works. In the period leading up to an election, the property development industry pours millions of dollars into the coffers of the New South Wales Labor Party. The Labor Party then uses those donations to buy saturation television advertising during the election campaign. But during that campaign, it makes no mention whatsoever of what uh, the government intends to do with the planning laws. But 12 months after the election, the newly elected Labor government 
presents a set of uh, so-called reforms to the planning laws based on the latest wish list from the development industry. Hey, 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 